Currently, we assume linear scaling for drug dosages. So let me explain what that means. Let's say that you have two patients. One of them is 50 kilograms and the other one is 100 kilograms. If the standardized dose for a patient of 50 kilograms is two grams of, let's just say, you know, hypothetical medication, then because this person is twice as big, you would go ahead and just give them four grams of that medication. This was just based off of simple assumptions about the size of things. And um, the problem with this is that it's actually a lot more complex than just simple, well, okay, this is twice as big, so we give them twice as much medication. Um, there's a guy named Max Kleiber, who I wanna say in like the 1930s, which was a long time ago, <laughs> came up with something called Kleiber's Law, which was a way to scale uh, animal metabolism to a three-fourth power scale. And for reasons that don't make sense to me, his work went largely unfocused on. I mean, it, it, I, it's been a while since I've worked in healthcare, but certainly not the 1930s, right? And we're still assuming linear scaling with our medications. So if the metabolism scales to a three-fourth power, why do we not give uh, medications to a three-fourth power? Why do we not scale medication more accurately? And that's really because Kleiber's law has gone unnoticed, especially in a clinical setting. And the thing is, it's the four here. This four, the fourth power there, there's no clear explanation, at least there wasn't for a very long time as to why this is the case. So the reason why it's a fourth power law is really interesting. It was thanks to a guy named Jeffrey West who came up with an idea that your cardiovascular system has an added dimension to it because it has a space filling nature of it. So uh, four dimensions is kind of hard for me to visualize. So I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate what I mean by this. We'll say that it's a, a cuboidal cell just to, to illustrate it. You know, you can use the, the dimensions of a cube are, are pretty close to the dimensions of any regular cell. Obviously, to some extent, it's, it's variables. But for the purpose of this, let's just look at this. Okay, so it has three dimensions. It has a length, a width, and a height. Or rather, I could say in mathematics terms, an X, Z, and Y. And this is a three-dimensional object, right? Kleiber's law is a three-fourth power scaling law. So the fourth dimension comes from an added fractal dimension. And okay, so let's look at this piece of paper. First of all, let's just go ahead and, and, and lower the dimensions that we're working with here so that we can maybe visualize how we can add an extra dimension with a two-dimensional object, and then we can apply that to a three-dimensional object. So this is a piece of paper, and this piece of paper is, for all practical purposes, a two-dimensional object, right? We can visualize it as a two-dimensional object. There is a third dimension there, but it's really, 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 really small. It's orders of magnitude smaller than the other two dimensions. But watch what I'm about to do with it. Two-dimensional object, if I fold it to where it becomes space filling, and notice that I'm just, I'm not connecting the points here. It's still a two-dimensional object. I'm just folding it up, curling it up. I'm not connecting the points. I'm not making it three-dimensional. I'm just folding up the two dimensions to make them space filling. All of a sudden, oh my gosh, that looks more like a three-dimensional object rather than a two-dimensional object. And I can do things like, you know, it has a lot of the properties of a three-dimensional object, right? And so that's really where in, in Kleiber's law, the four comes from, okay? There's the three dimensions that a cell occupies, and then there's that extra added fourth dimension from the space-filling nature of the cardiovascular system. And so the reason why this is really important is when we look at, let's say, maybe scaling drug dosages, we need to be much more careful about how we decide to, to increase those drugs. The three-fourth power law needs to be implemented, I think, to make better predictive models for you know patients, let's say, they are taking multiple types of, of oncology medications or patients who have severe complications outside of that. There's a lot of practical applications to this 